Today we're going to look at the language of algebra. The word algebra is actually an Arabic name or an Arabic word uh, and it means the reunion of broken parts. It's a really poetic kind of thing and uh, a lot of the language that we get from mathematics is actually from, from Arabic. Um, we even get uh, their, their, some of their numerals from them as well. Some of the numbers are, uh, come down from, from Arabic and also um, uh, different Hindi number systems as well. So if we have a look at some of the different um, new terms that we need to learn before we can start um, using algebra, and algebra is an incredible, incredible uh, way to, to maths. Um, mathematics is, is really, it's one of the fundamental um, uh, tools that mathematicians use to solve problems and, and, and generate um, models and things for different, different um, solving different problems in the real world. So we need to learn a few of the different terms and terminologies um, before we can start actually doing some using algebra to solve some awesome problems. So firstly, variables or pronumerals. They're, these are the staple of algebra. They're letters that can represent numbers. And that's the fantastic thing about them. Sometimes uh, we know what the variables are, and maybe it's a velocity or speed or something, and we can give it a letter like V or S or, or, or whatever, and, uh, and, and we can replace it many, many different times with a different, different value, um, depending on the situation, depending on the velocity or speed that something's going. Um, we could, variables and pronumerals can be used if we don't know what, what a number is, what don't know what an answer is. It, we can give it an, 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 un, a number, or a, sorry, a pronumeral or a variable that we will then uh, try and, and use our mathematical knowledge and our mathematical reasoning to work out what that actual value is. So, because mathematicians are lazy, Algebra is one of the one of, one of the great tools that, that allows um, mathematicians to do things in a much easier way. Um, we can write a times b. We can just write that as a b. Um, and so there's no any time there is a gap in between two, um, a, even a number and a pronumeral or two pronumerals, they are multiplied together. So a b will always be a times b. Um, if we've got a divided by b, we can write that as just a over b. Okay. Um, and in fact, we, we know that the vinculum there, the vinculum which is the line between uh, the numerator and denominator of a fraction, that's a, it has the exact same function as dividing. And the divide sign even looks like um, a fraction there with a numerator over a, de a denominator. So we can just write that easily as a over b. An expression is a combination of numbers and variables with mathematical operations. So here we've got two expressions. Here this expression is 3x plus 2yz. And so that is 3 times x and that's 2 times y times z. So if we knew the values for x, y, and z, we'd actually be able to evaluate that and just and, and solve it like we would any normal expression, any expression that isn't algebraic, any expression with just numbers that we know. Here we've got another uh, expression, 8 divided by, and then in brackets, 3a minus 2b, so that's 3 times a minus 2 times b, plus 41. So their expressions, and, and, and they've got, um, we've got all the mathematical operations in here. We've got addition, division, subtraction, uh, multiplication between the three times x. And we've got brackets there. Um, so an expression can have all of these different things. We can have numbers, 3, 2, 8, 3, 41. Um, we can have uh, variables there as well, or pronumerals, x, y, z, a, b. So all of these different things can be in an expression. Now in a term, a term is part of an expression that only has numbers, numbers, variables, multiplication and or division. So a term cannot have addition or subtraction. So here in these two expressions above, this is a term and this is a term here, but the whole thing isn't a term. So 3x is a term, a part of this expression, 2yz is a term as part of the whole expression. Here 3a is a term. 2b is a term here, or minus 2b, uh, oh, sorry, just 2b, and 41 is a term as well. 8, eight, is, it, eight is its own term as well because otherwise we have to incorporate the whole lot here, it's 8 divided by this whole lot. Um, so 8 is its own term. So they can have, they just can't have subtraction or addition within them. So this whole thing here isn't a term. 3a minus 2b is not one term. That's two terms, 3a 
and 2b. So essentially, a term is anything, any part of an expression that's separated by addition or subtraction. So here, they're separated by addition. Here, these two are separated by subtraction. This one's separated by addition here. And this one is separated by, well, it's separated by the brackets as well. So a coefficient, now, a coefficient is the number in front of a variable, okay? So here we've got x, 3x. The coefficient is of x is 3. The coefficient here of y is 1, because that's the same as 1 times y. 1 times y is just going to be y. Here, the coefficient of z is negative 7. It's minus 7, because we need to incorporate the whole of everything that's out the front. So here, this is plus 3. This is plus 1y, one, uh, one and this is minus 7. So we need to incorporate the whole lot. So the coefficient here is minus 7 plus 1, plus 3, plus 3, okay? And if, we've, if, we, if I were to ask you, what's the coefficient of t here? You can't see a t, can you? However, if I add 0 times t, okay, add 0 times t, that's exactly the same here as this because that's going to just be 0. 0 times t is, is 0 times anything is 0. So the coefficient of any variable you can't see there is going to be zero. Um, so, and, and you can have any, any number of combinations of letters in there and their coefficient would be zero. A constant term, now a constant term doesn't contain a variable, it's only a number. So if we're just looking at our expressions here, this isn't a constant term because it's got x, it's got a variable with it. This isn't a constant term either because it's got y and z. 8 would be considered a constant term because it doesn't have a, uh, any, any variable attached to it. Um, these two here, definitely not constant terms. But 41 is a constant term as well because there's no variable attached to it. There's no, uh, no pronumeral, no variable. So let's just look at this really quick example. Here's an expression, 4a plus b minus 12c plus 5. So let's list the terms, list the coefficients, and then name the constant term. So here we're listing the coefficients of a, b, c, and d as well. So the, the uh, terms in this expression are 4a, b, 12c, it's 12c, we're, not, we're looking at just what's separated, separated out here. So if we were separating these out from the additions and subtractions, this is what we see. Oops. This is what we see. So 4a is a term, b, 12c, and 5. They're all the terms there. Okay, and they're separated out from those additions and subtractions. Let's look at the coefficients though. Uh, a, we've got plus 4, so plus 4 there. B is plus 1, because it's 1 times B. 1 times B is just B, so the coefficient of B is going to be 1. C is going to be minus 12. The whole lot out the front of C, minus 12, minus 12 there. And D, because we don't have anything, we've got plus 0 times D, the coefficient of D is 0. Now, when, if we're naming the constant term here, it's going to be the term that doesn't have any variable at the front of it, no, or, or no variable attached to it, and it's not multiplied by a variable at all. And the only one that isn't multiplied by a variable at all is 5. So the constant term is 5.